We have five minutes for questions. Yes. Great. So this is a question for Walter, but also uh, Antonia and maybe the others in the room that understand the Greek uh, situation. So if it, there's a little bit of a question about the burden of proof here. If you look at the uh, the data from the, the 50s and 60s on the health outcomes in Greece, uh, do we know, I'm, my assumption is that it was mostly extra virgin olive oil. I mean, the, the, the cultural practices of, of making olive oil in Greece tend towards early harvest, right? So I would think that most of the oil would have been high in micronutrients, uh, and that there's, um, so I mean, whether it's Crete or other parts of Greece, I mean, wouldn't we say that the, the health data was associated with oil that was not only extra virgin, but also high in, in micronutrients? No, not necessarily. You're, what are you saying, Antonio? Yes, as I mentioned yesterday, I have great uh, respect to all the intervention studies because they provide us a lot of information. But speaking on a population level, we do not have information about the content if, we, if the olive oil used was extra virgin. And to me, even in Crete, even in Kalamata, in the places where really they are consuming locally produced the best olive oil of at least of Greece. The way they were keeping or we are keeping it, it's not good. The temperature in the summer is very hot. And then we do not take care of putting the olive oil in black, uh, um, uh, in, how do you say? Um, to store it away, to store, to store it correctly and to avoid oxidation by the air. So let's say we collect and we produce olive oil from November till early January, but we consume till next December. What happened to this olive oil during the summertime? Apparently, it's not anymore extra virgin. That's one thing. And the other thing, it came to my mind uh, uh, when Walter was presenting his excellent um, results, that there are so many secrets in the Mediterranean diet. I, I, I remember when we chemically analyzed the 14 wild herbs which they were used to prepare a cretan pie, we discovered, and it was to my great surprise, that flavones or flavonones, I mean, every every wild herb, they, they were certain different wild herbs, it has one only component very high. And then the rest, they were not so high. So the combination of the 14, they developed a kind of um, a drug, let's say, which contains all the flavonoids and the flavones in equal amount, but it was the combination. So that's why I'm saying that it's very important to, to see the combination of the foods consumed and the interaction between the foods. And then I think that although olive oil per se is a fantastic component with high content in flavon and flavonoids and microelements, it's mainly the vehicle, the vehicle of all the other beneficial components for which we, have, we do not know the variety. For example, I mean, in the health nurse study, which kind of vegetables they're consuming? And that makes a lot of difference. Thank you. We have to move because we have only 48 seconds. Who has a quick question for a quick answer? Yes, Frank. Uh, what I just want to ask you about the beta carotene supplement uh, findings, which are very interesting. Um, I, any other uh, trials was uh, done cognitive function assessment in the beta carotene trials, like ATBC? And... Jen, um, I, I don't, I'm not aware of that. Uh, that that's a good question. Um, th there are some other trials. The uh, WAX study that Joanne Manson did had beta carotene, partly because of the findings from ATBC 
uh, beta carotene uh, there seemed to increase cancer, and that became very controversial. And so beta carotene trials were stopped, actually, even before they finished. One other, so there's a, a gap here. We're sort of rediscovering carotenoids, I think. They were prematurely pronounced dead in terms of health benefits 20 years ago. Uh, so uh, we could check, but I'm not, not aware that other studies have done that. But I did also wanted to make a point that that was a study that went on for 18 years. And I, my guess is there's a lot of no, studies that were published as negative studies that just didn't go on for long enough in the whole area of research on cognitive function. I think it's looking at a two or three year study is looking through a narrow window at a process that is decades long. Thank you very much.